In this lesson, we'll look at configuring video playback in Windows 10. Some apps use the video tools that are built into Windows 10. These include core apps that come with Windows 10, such as Microsoft Edge, the Photos app, and the Movies and TV apps. Also, many video apps that you get from the Microsoft Store, like the Hulu, Netflix, and Vudu apps, will use system video tools. For these apps, you can manage many video playback options by using the video playback settings found in the Settings app. Let's open the Settings app. We'll go to Apps, and then down here we have Video Playback. Now up here at the top we have the Video Preview tool, then we've seen this type of preview tool in other places in the Settings app. This will let us see the effects of our current settings. And of course having this here is useful if we make changes, we want to know right away how these are going to improve playback, we can use this playback window. Now below this we have some settings that will depend on the hardware that are included with your device. For example, you may see a newer option to adjust video based on lighting. The switch here will use the ambient light sensor on your device, so if you don't have that, you won't see it. But you can use that light sensor to improve the visibility of videos when you're in a bright environment. Below this, most devices will have the Stream HDR video with a link to your Windows HD color settings. Now HDR is a popular option now for streaming, digital video, and for even games. While the settings acknowledge HDR, your device really needs to have the screen and the video hardware that can make use of HDR for this to be a benefit. HDR will result in a brighter, more vibrant, and more detailed picture. The settings here also cover wide color gamut support, which is usually a feature that's aimed at photo editing. Now there's an option to select a display, and the settings below will be specific to that display that's selected. If your device and the selected display can support some or all of these options, You'll see switches below to enable play of HDR games and apps and streaming HDR video. You also have calibration tools below that will let you optimize the way videos are displayed in both high and standard dynamic range video. If you have a portable device, scrolling down you'll also be able to see battery option settings. Now this will let you see what the current default settings are for your device for using HDR processing when you're running on battery power. Checkboxes again would let you be very granular in how HDR content is handled when running on a battery. This drop down will either give priority to extending your battery life or to the image quality. Now, the default is for battery life, so video playback may be noticeably inferior to what you get when you're plugged in. Jumping back, we also have a switch to automatically process video to enhance it. Now, if this is enabled, your device will use the GPU to enhance videos with contrast and color improvements. If you do not see the switch, then your device likely does not have a graphics processor that could handle this. Obviously, having the feature enabled will put more load on the device, so you can disable it if you see it causes performance issues. We also have a checkbox. I prefer video to be played at lower resolution. Now, of course, no one really prefers this. But as you can see, this is referring to bandwidth when streaming. Most streaming services will adjust video quality automatically to match your bandwidth. However, if your network or internet has problems keeping up and your video is always buffering, then you may just need to check this box and use a lower resolution. We also have battery options here. Now similar to what we saw earlier with HDR video, you can select the standard default video playback to be optimized for battery life or for image quality. You may also see the option to check the box to not process videos when on battery. Now this is referring to the switch above that would use the GPU to enhance the video playback. We also have another checkbox shown here to play video at a lower resolution when on battery. Just looking at all these settings, you can see that we have quite a few tweaks we can make to balance our battery life and computer processing load, as well as to optimize our network bandwidth that's available. All of this is just within our video playback settings. Depending on your device and your circumstances, you may want to tweak some of these settings to really optimize your video playback. In this lesson, we've looked at configuring video playback. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.